afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is time for the best part of Yaxi, the lightning talks. <laughs> now, just in case you're not quite sure, lightning talks are basically short talks. They're five minute talks. Five minutes can be just the right amount of time to get across an idea, introduce a new story, say what you did last year in your summer holidays, or maybe even some Pearl stuff. Now, I'm going to be a bit strict with the talks, with the speakers especially, and I'm going to be quite strict with my five minutes, so you're going to have to help me a little bit. When there's one minute remaining in the talk, I have a little bell here, and it's going to go like this. And then the speaker will know they only have one minute left. And then, when the five minutes are over, I have a gong. <laughs> and when the gong goes, please clap your hands, thank the speaker, and we'll be on to the next speaker. So, I'm not giving a lightning talk, but okay. Um, Basically, we have lots of speakers. They're all going to be good. Some might even have time for questions, but they probably won't. So let's just keep things going, OK? Thanks. And without further ado, the first speaker. Um, I hope I finish in five minutes, because the last two tests I did on the public, it uh, excelled to 50. Um, I'm going to kick some shins, and it's about presenting code, not about what it will be compiled in, because I know some statements will be compiled back to statement modifiers. So, here we go. Um, example code one. I have to do, deal with code uh, written in Java, written in Perl, and written in uh, 4GL and C and whatever. And this is code I really don't like to lead. Uh, 401, uh, it throws an exception. Exception as a generic class, not a specific exception. And if you go look at what actually happens is that throw an exception, which cannot be thrown because there is no point in the whole code that can throw an exception, just throw it away because this will ruin the rest of your code. Uh, next, what, will, what is left is uh, something that if i is bigger than 1 returns, else it returns, and what the fuck is the last return doing there? It will never be done. I heard Larry in his opening speech talk about let's change this and let's change that, who has uh, visited Gabor's uh, refactor code, will see that also he says an else and a return is not a good practice, so these two can go. And then you are left with... Next example. Logical flow is very important. If you read code, you want to read what is really going on. And the exceptions should be thrown early. The expected and desired behavior should be the logical read. So you should early die or bail out. Next, ex uh, next ex uh, example. This is actual code I have to deal with. And Gabor is right, it should be refactored. It, it is the expectation of the author. If S not as null, we do something with it. If it's not empty, then we do 150 lines of code. And else throw an exception or throw an exception. This is bad. Unmaintainable. So the first thing to do is the last exception, throw upwards. That will code the next exception. Also, move up. Right. Now it does what we want to do, and we can all read it and maintain it. Even those 150 lines can be eased out and probably moved into shorter or, sim or simpler uh, methods or calls. On the right side is the Pro 5, which does exactly the same. My statement is, if the if block in an if-else structure ends with the return die or exit, there shall never be an else. This code, if written in Java or Perl or C or whatever, will trigger my thoughts to be, it is ending. There will be not be an else. The else is only useful if the code below the else is run by both the if and the else. So this should all be I. Who wrote that? 
And this is only possible in Perl. It's not possible in Java. It's not possible in C. It's not possible in any other language. So this is why I hate statement modifiers. Because I'm refactoring, I'm reading if return, else return. Okay, this is bad. And then there is an unless dollar y. Fuck man. So I rest my case. Thank you. Hello? Yeah. Okay, uh, what I have here is an ebook reader from Amazon Kindle. Uh, a lot of people have such a thing nowadays. I wrote a small module, put it on CPAN. You can create something like this with it. What you see here is just a small example. You see some titles, you see a table of content, you can click on it. Uh, you see marked up text, code, picture. All this you can generate now very easily with this module. And I maybe have to mention that uh, the format for Amazon Kindle is closed source. And I think it was not that easy before uh, this module. So I just want to present you this new possibility of publishing your stuff. Uh, I actually don't know anything about ebooks. I did some research about the format found out that it's actually just plain HTML, but not really complete, so you have to make some modifications. I found some tools already written in Perl, which do a lot of the work, but they were not on CPAN, but they were open source. I used them, wrote an API, wrote some tests, and released it to the CPAN to be of help. Um, until today and in the past, um, you wrote some code like that with uh, this module. You could set some meta information like the author or the book title, the encoding and stuff like that. You can also set a table of content which will be generated automatically and is linkable. Um, what you read here, mhtml, is what I call the HTML of this format. You can operate directly on it. You can insert page breaks. And the main method to add input uh, is add pod content, which means you can just directly put your pod into the ebook. It will, it will be converted. Um, after releasing that, I got a very bad review. Um, <laughs> well, the module is very helpful, but he kind of expected something different under this uh, uh, name. And, uh, but I decided not to rename the module. I decided to write uh, some new code. Um, the code is not yet released, uh, but what you will be able to do is to add general content and you need to specify a driver. Um, this driver can take some options. And uh, yeah, I've written an example driver which you can have a look of at the GitHub repository. Uh, I've, read, I've uh, translated the, the pod code to also to this driver format. So this will be working. And what I'm looking now for is people who are interested in releasing stuff for this device and maybe write some drivers for input formats. Uh, there were already some people uh, interested in the module and submitted some patches. Um, yeah, so please come to this GitHub account if you're interested or send me an email. 
I'm done. Dancing in between. Maybe a song. Hello? Okay, I'm Mark Keating. If you don't know what I do, you have to look for me. Um, where are the Sender Newbies? Are they here? Can they stand up? At least one. There, two there, two there. Oh, right. Stand up, take a bow. <laughs> Okay, so it's in the third year from the EPO. We've had some successful people. There's one over there. He's very successful. He's in Perlmunger groups. He goes to Perl meetings. He goes to conferences. He talks at conferences. He maintains modules. He's on the P5 list. And he's generally a nice guy. And he talks at conferences as well. So it's a success. We raised a lot of money in the first year. Didn't raise quite so much money in the final two years. And it will be the final two years unless we get some more money. There's going to be a theme today. Money. You can go to this site, you can donate, there are easy links. So, hands up if you like CPAN testers. Hands up if you think that CPAN testers do a great service. Hands up! You raise your arm, keep your hand up if you donated to them. <laughs> they don't exist for nothing, most of the things come from them putting out of their own pocket. So, my thought here is, is it's a very small money to get a server each month. All we have to do is persuade 20 companies to give 20 euros or 20 pounds a month. Or 40 companies to give that, and we have that covered. That's all we need. It's not very much, not for a company. It has to be consistent. So, again, if you go to this site, you can set up a regular donation. It does it all for you. And then you can just forget about it. Wipe it, wipe it off your tax bill, and CPAN testers will survive. The platforms contest is being run again. It was tried to be run before, but it wasn't very successful. Um, we need somebody to step in and help organize it. I don't have the time. Um, Lars doesn't have the time. So all it is is some paperwork, organize some people, send out some emails. We can guide you through the process, but we don't want to do the work because we're busy people. So somebody needs to step up to the plate. So come and find me or Daxin and say, I would like to do this. I want to get involved. It will be good for you. And perhaps if we can get some of the teams as well, Catalyst, Modalicious, Recudo, Dancer, where are you? Come and, come and speak to us as well. Let's have some teams and let's maybe be successful. Yapsi Brazil is going to be held this year in Sao Paulo, October the 19th to the 20th. Conference has been sponsored by the EPO, but you can sponsor yourself there. If you're a speaker and you get yourself there, you'll actually become a sponsor. So that's, that's kind of neat, but you can also sponsor them as well. And you can contact the EPO about that. <laughs> so London Pearl Workshop is being held on the 24th of November this year. We're looking for speakers, sponsors, helpers, anybody interested who wants to come to London, have some free beer, free coffee, potentially free food, and it, look, free training, free, free everything, all in the center of an Olympic metropolis. <laughs> so if you're loving all of these things, Pearl, CPAN testers, send a newbie, briefing paper, task cancel, all the business and community, testing, quality assurance, community, the sponsoring of many events, helping to organize these many events, the distribution of information. If you actually want to have a say in this yourself and have a vote on anything that's done, if you want to be part of an organization that if you pay to be a member, you can be democratically elected as a director of the organization and guide the future of it. If you want to contribute to the ecosystem, with money that's used only to further cause of Pearl. You must become a member of the Enlightened Pearl organization because it gives you all of those. And you can do it here, just in case you did forgot from the other slides. And that's me done. Any questions? So you're all going to go and sign up? Excellent.